In this video I'm going to show you one of the coolest features about the GoPro Studio software. This comes free when you buy a GoPro but you can also download it free from the GoPro site and I'd recommend you did uh, download it because it's got some really cool features especially if you've got a GoPro with the GoPro uh, Pro Tune feature and the uh, distortion correction soft part of the software which are both very very good indeed but there's another part to this software that was introduced fairly recently I think it was introduced late to uh, 2014 and it's very 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 cool if you like slow motion footage now in the past um, a lot of cameras at the moment shoot around 60 frames a second if you're lucky the GoPro shoots around 120 frames a second it will go faster but generally the faster you shoot the poorer the quality of the footage uh, you lose a bit of um, definition you lose a bit of sharpness and clarity in the shots um, so what a lot of people have turned to in the past for the past sort of five six seven eight years um, there's some software called Twixter you may have heard about and what this will do is actually slow down the footage up to a thousand times um, but obviously if you're doing that with something that's uh, shot at 60 frames a second you're gonna need a lot of kind of it's gonna look completely jagged if you try and slow it down normally you're gonna have like one frame it's gonna look really kind of jolty and awful so what Twixter does is actually works out the difference between each individual frame and then fills it with individual pixels so it'll take um, frame one and frame two and then it'll add maybe up to 50 60 frames in the middle taking the, the detail from each frame either side and just create a whole new batch of frames so that it looks really seamless and really good a few caveats to this first of all um, you, you you will unless you've got a if you've got a complicated background with something moving against it you may get some kind of um, blurriness some it looks a bit kind of smudgy um, but if you've got a clear background something flying in the sky or in the sea or something where it's not too detailed like leaves or you know that kind of thing then you'll get really good footage secondly you need to be shooting at the highest frame rate you can which is still reasonable quality so I'd recommend 60 frames per second maybe 120 but really stick to 60 frames a second if you can on high definition and then shoot at a high shutter speed so because the GoPro is pretty much you're, you're set with whatever shutter speed you can make sure the lighting's good but also don't use any filters like a um, neutral density filter because that will slow the shutter speed down so you want as fast a shutter speed as possible the fastest frame rate you can that retains the, the good quality and shoot at that now once you've done that any software like Twixter will find it a lot easier to actually introduce those new frames in between each individual um, actual frame so Twixter costs maybe over three hundred dollars as a standalone program uh, which is quite a lot even after all these years you thought they would have reduced it but it's still fairly expensive but it does a brilliant job now GoPro when they updated their firmware their software last year um, actually introduced the same feature pretty much so and it's free so it's absolutely awesome I'm gonna quickly run you through what it does now so I'm gonna import a file uh, this file here was shot at um, 2.7k you can see down here uh, 2.7k and it was shot at 60 frames a second it was outside nice bright sunny day so I've got a good fast shutter speed um, so I want to kind of show how this software works now I'm going to look at the advanced settings quickly we're going to keep all the settings the same um, when we process this and we're going to keep AVR remove fisheye yeah we're going to keep all that the same and we're just going to output it to oh didn't mean to do that clear that remove clip um, what I'm going to do is put it into our directory test video um, and we are going to just basically convert it but before I do that there's only one part of the clip I want to use and it's where this dog jumps so it falls down a bit there and then I think about let's start it so just about there so if I go back a little tiny bit before he jumps and put a mark in and then a mark out just after he lands about there and all I'm going to do is process that small bit of clip where the dog's jumping so we add it to the conversion list we're going to convert it straight away into a, a new file and that will then it's done that already so if I now click this AVI file let's see which one it was so if I now click that you can see that's the actual file it'll keep playing and that's at 60 frames a second of the dog jumping so what we now need to do is go to proceed uh, to step two and this is where we actually do the slowing down so if we go to step two we get the file that's been produced and we drag it into the timeline and we've got the file in there so everything should be okay it just plays as normal 
double jumping. So what we need to do, we can uh, obviously add Pro Tune, do all the normal editing that you would do to the shot. But if you look at this little box up here, we've got speed. Now it's set by default to 100%, which is the, the standard, it's 60 frames a second, whatever I shot at. Um, so obviously that, that that's going to be the default, so you're not going to mess about with things by accident. What you can actually do is speed it up, up to 10,000 times, <laughs> um, or you can slow it right down to 1%. So that would be absolutely massive, massive, 100 times slower than normal. But what we're going to do in this instance is go to slow it down 10 times. So once you've gone to that, once you've clicked 10, so it's 10% of the original speed. If I play this now, if I take this back to the beginning and play it, it will play at 10%. You can see there it's now playing at 10%, but can you see it jolting and jittering? So it's playing each individual frame and you can see it jolts in between each one still looks clear still looks good but there's still that jitter as it goes from frame to frame now what the software is going to do is fill in each of those individual gaps and create much more smooth footage but here's the caveat it takes a long time to actually do so what you need to uh, you need a powerful computer but you also need maybe an hour or so for this to happen this is only a very short clip 17 seconds um, but we need to actually export it now as a, as a HD file. If you export it as a 2.7K file, it's going to take even longer. So you can see there, we've reduced it to um, a tenth of the speed, 10%, um, and it plays fine. So if we go back to the beginning again, you can see it plays slowly, but we've got the jittery look to the shot. Okay. So now what we need to do is export it. So we're going to export this as a MP4 file, as a 1080 um, file at Ooh, let's have a look we're going to do it at 30 frames a second so it's going to be halved and we're going to um, take it down to 10% of the original speed give it a good bit rate now this is the important bit it's easy to miss this it's the enable flux speed change so you apply that and it says apply flux for smoother speed changes in your video export time will be longer than usual and we're going to end up with a 71 megabyte file so literally all you need to do now is export it and give it a file name let's call it test 3 I've actually already done it with test 2 which I'm going to show you but for the purposes of this um, I'm going to call it test 3 but the reason I've already done it previous to this is because you can see how long it takes it will probably take up to an hour to act for this actually to produce and that's just a 17 second clip or um, I think we've got yeah about 17 seconds but it's going to take forever you can see it's still on 0% <laughs> uh, and this is a very powerful computer it's 32 gigabytes of RAM all the latest um, you know video cards and things like that so it's, it's gonna take quite a while so rather than that going all the way through just bear in mind that when you add the flux to to your footage it will take a long time so I'm gonna cancel that and just show you the one that I rendered earlier a bit like Blue Peter so wait for that to cancel if it's going to yep uh, and then we're gonna play test 3 so uh, not test 3 that was the one I just started test 2 so if we play this one you can see now the difference see the dog as it jumps there's no jitteriness it's all very smooth it's very slow even everyone walking the waves everything is really super smooth there's a few tiny anomalies if you're really kind of anal about your footage and really picky but generally that's speeded down very nicely so if we close that and look at this again here you can see the jitteriness of the dog before flux is applied see each individual frame that's a little bit jittery and dog lands but when we look at the test 2 the video you can see now there's no jitteriness it's all very smooth dog jumps no jittering all those middle bits have uh, been filled filled with frames uh, from the flux and from the GoPro Studio software so you can see how well that works now slowing something down 10 times is not the kind of norm normally you show it slow it down by about maybe 50% 60% or you know get it down to about 30-40% of the original footage um, just to give it a really kind of nice look but really this software is amazing so again it's one massive reason to get hold of GoPro Studio have a play with it and just have some real fun with clips because it's hard to get a high speed camera uh, it costs a lot of money um, and if you've got just a standard video camera even using your smartphone you can take the footage from that convert it to an mp4 file if it hasn't done already load it into GoPro Studio and slow it down for some really good fun clips.